Hello, this is Hakka Nabina, and today we are going to be reading about a very important level document. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. Let's access this data. Processing information. This may take a while. One verse. 0.1% Okay, why is I'm starting to think that this might be the joke Oh, no 0.2% Oh my goodness, how long does this actually take? I'm just gonna... Read through these, just make sure that this isn't going to be like a three hour long video because we're waiting for something to load. Yeah, that's a joke. Joke is there is no level and it's just going to waste our time. So now we are now reading the launcher rooms. I did not rehearse this. Wait. I'm oh, sorry, I mean the launcher rooms. Survival difficulty, class 1. Safe, unstable topology, non hostile entities. Description The launcher rooms is very similar in appearance to the Cygnus archive. Like the archive, level 906 consists of an infinite Victorian library with books and other artifacts signed in shelves. Unlike level 0906, however, the library that makes up the blonde rooms is in a state of extreme aggregation. Its layout is much more convoluted and disorganized than its counterpart. Stairways often lead into walls, floors sometimes slant to at untraversable angles, and locations have been known to change drastically when out of view. Many books can be seen lying on the shelves of the level, but upon closer inspection, one will find that every book in the level is volume 1 of the 1965 novel Dune by Frank Herbert. <clears throat> Translated to Portuguese. Unlike level 906, cameras work here. Oh, that's neat. These books frequently contain a multitude of typos and unfamiliar sections not found in the original novel. When asked about the level, Blonde claimed to not have any knowledge of it. Entities throughout the level, travelers can, can occasionally find unique entities which hear a superficial resemblance to NT140, more commonly known as Blonde. These entities are generally non hostile, but should be treated with caution when approached as their actions and behaviors are highly unpredictable. Interviews with several of them have been included below. For more interviews, please view the attached document. What's this? We are not reading all that. Whew. 
Bench is an entity that resembles blonde, except that her torso is shaped like and functions like a punk uh, like a park bench. Notably, she also has a second pair of legs, which helps hold her up, and her two pairs of legs also allow for surprisingly fast locomotion. She seems generally amicable and regularly invites water to sit on her lap and rest for a while. <clears throat> Interviewer, Rita Kane. Interviewed, Bench. Begin log. Hello, dear. Would you like to take a seat? No, I think I'm alright. Why oh, insist? You look so tired. I'm sure it would feel very good to get off your feet for a short while. I'll. And Bench scurries around so she sits right behind Rita. Well, okay. Rita sits down. Wow, your lap is so soft! Of course, dear. It's my job to keep you comfortable. Why exactly is that something you feel obligated to do? Ah, what a strange question. Why do any of us do anything? I keep people comfortable because it makes them happy, and that makes me happy. I can't help overcome trauma or anything like blonde, but at least I can do my own small part, and that's enough for me. <sighs> Blank. Blank a pair. Ears are similar to blonde in shape and stature. The main difference between the martyr Blank appears as if she's wearing a gray scale and that she likes a face. Blank is one of the most unpredictable entities on the level. So it's advised that waterers take caution when interacting with her. Interviewer Rita Akane interviewed Blank. Begin log. Hello, dear. Would you like some tea? E. 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 Each E is preceded by the sound of uh, a cassette tape rewinding. Uh, yes. Blake Butterfest pours a teapot into teacups of, uh, of the ether and begins pouring tea onto the floor approximately two inches to the left of the cups. Rita tries to move one of the cups under a stream of tea, but it won't budge. Uh, Blonde? Blank continues for 47 in more seconds and then stops. My name isn't Blonde. That's her name. Blake manifests the third hand and points toward the wall next to her a slight downwards angle. My name is... Audio Failure. Uh, nice to meet you, Blank. Can you tell me anything about yourself? No. No. Yes. No. 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 How long have you been here, Blank? Since the dream started. Whew. Blonde the Boys. Blonde the Boys is a blonde woman who was found watering the halls of the blonde on, on, on rooms. She here she bears very little physical resemblance to blonde and seems, for all intents and purposes, to be a normal human. <clears> hmm. <throat> <sighs> Interviewer Rita Kane interviewed Blonde the Boys. H Hello, is someone there? Hi, what's your name? Oh God, a real person! God, I've been in this dreadful place for so long. Do you know the way out? Not really, to be honest. The database says that you just walk around for long enough. 
page will take you to another level. The database? What are you talking about? Never mind that. Just keep walking away around and I'm sure you'll find your way out. Anyway, I saw a few more blondes to interview. Uh, okay. How did Rita know oh, oh, they were a blonde? And also... Why is this considered an entity of the level? Are they stuck there because they have a similar name? March Blonde. March Blonde looks identity to Entity 140, but with the noble difference that she is always seen wearing clothing and hats with drawings of blonde printed on them. She sells a variety of blonde themed merchandise items, which can be purchased through trade with her. <sighs> so you introduce yourself as Merch Blonde. What makes you that and not just blonde? Well, my parents named me Merge, and I always thought that name was kind of tacky. I mean, it's a terrible pun. Like, Bench I kind of get because it sounds like blonde, but Merge is stretching it a little bit. I mean, Bench is kind of stretching it too. So I figured I'd just cut out the middleman and just say my gimmick right off the bat, right off the hat. Gimmick? Well, yeah. My gimmick is that I'm blonde, but I sell merchandise. Well, I'm not blonde. I don't even act like her, but you get the point. Is it, uh, is it weird to you that your life is based on a gimmick? Not really. A lot of people have gimmicks. Like, your, your gimmick is, is that you're the stock interview ca interviewer character. I mean, you don't even get a plot until level 532 and even then it immediately peers out. What? Uh, never mind. Say, would you like to buy a blonde undersickle? They're made from 100% organic blonde. <sighs> Objects sold by Merch Blonde. Blonde steak. A piece of meat which looks similar to a normal slice of steak, and who has taken a bite of the steak has unanimously declared that it tastes like blonde. Though the specifics of this change wildly between tasters, it's unknown how these steaks are manufactured or their connection with the real blonde. Blonde steak. An ordinary lo in lo elongated a piece of wood with much which Birch Blonde says is very useful for hunting blonde pyres, as well as putting up tents. Beyond Shirt, a black t-shirt which has the phrase, I witnessed it beyond, and all I got was this lousy t-shirt. The significance of this phrase is unknown to Meg. To us, we get the meme. Lawn Ranch, a ball of ranch which has a chibi blonde drawn on the front. No irregular effects. <clears throat> Doing a Baldo Um, Volume Un. A normal Portuguese copy of the first volume of the novel Dune by Frank Herbert. When questioned about the tribe, Merge Blonde said, there are a lot of these in the level, so I might as well sell them. I haven't actually read it, but I watched the movie and I thought it was, e it was pretty decent. Duna Volume 2 A normal Portuguese copy of the first volume of the novel Dune by Frank Herbert with the uh, word um, crutched scratched out and replaced with a sloppily scrawled 2. When asked about it, Birch Blonde said that it would 
you're the perfect addition to anyone's Dune collection. Entrances and exits. The blonde rooms can be entered by running your fingers across the signature of any you have the unique entities is named with this level. These signatures can be found in the Portuguese copies of the first volume of the novel Dune by Fay Kerber, which are scattered across various levels of the back rooms. Exits. There is no known a concrete exit to the blonde rooms, but wanderers have reported finding themselves in another level after wandering around for long enough. Well, that was quite the funny gimmick. Lawn pyres? Anyway, that was the lawn rooms, which I mispronounced when I first introduced them because I didn't know what the gimmick was yet. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. No idea what's going to be happening tomorrow, but until then, goodbye!